I might have a slight addiction to graphics cards. What is going on guys, Jay's Two Cents here, bringing you another affordable graphics card review. Unfortunately, I'm not wearing the brightly colored blue shirt that I tend to wear when I do an affordable product review because it's dirty. And I don't wear dirty clothes on camera. At least not that you can see. And I'm not talking about my pants because reviewers don't wear pants. So recently AMD launched the R9 285 and to a lot of people, including myself, this card was a little bit confusing. I didn't really quite understand why it existed. I mean, we already have the 280 and the 280 was already beating the 760 in pretty much every single test. But then when you start to dig a little deeper in what the card is, you start to realize it truly is a uh, successor to the R9 280. Now the reason for that is the R9 280 is pretty much a rebranded 7950 graphics card. It is not GCN architecture, it doesn't have true audio, it doesn't have any of that stuff. And that's exactly what the R9 285 is bringing to the table. What I have sitting right here actually is the R9 280 from XFX. Now why do I even have this out here when this is actually a video about the Vision Tech Radeon, Radeon R9 285? Well, it's to show you how far they've actually come with the design. Now this right here, as I mentioned, is the R9 280. And as you can see, there is quite the size difference between the R9 285. And what if I told you the card on top is actually stronger than this card in every single way? Yeah, that's why you take it and you pretty much just toss it aside. Don't worry guys, no cards were actually harmed in the making of this video. Well, with the exception of maybe the Ego of the R9 280 and the GTX 760. Now, one of the things that makes this card actually superior to the 280 is it's not just a rebranded 7950 graphics card like the 280 is. This is a true GCN or graphics core next architecture which AMD launched with its Hawaii-based GPUs. This thing has got true audio, it's got HD Media Accelerator, PowerPlay technology, PowerTune technology, zero core power, Dolby True HD, I think I've already mentioned that, AMD HD, 3D technology, AMD Crossfire, AMD App Acceleration, iAffinity technology, the list goes on and on. Yeah, I'm reading the box because I, there's no way I could have ever said that without misspeaking. We all know I'm full of misspeaks sometimes. Now one of the things that I think is a little bit interesting though is the fact that it only has two gigabytes of GDDR5 versus the three gigabytes which are actually available on the R9 280. But when it came to benchmarking this beast that actually didn't really seem to make any sort of difference. Now this graphics card is featuring two DVI's, a DVI-D, a DVI-I, it's got a dual link, HDMI, and DisplayPort natively. Now the cooler on this thing I'll be honest with you, when I saw the pictures of this, I expected this to be kind of a cheap plasticky shroud. That's not what you get here. You get a full metal design on this. It's very, very sturdy. In fact, it doesn't flex, it doesn't creak. And when it's mounted because it's so short, the card, the card is so short, it doesn't droop. So the card is very, it's very sturdy and, and, and stiff. Now it's got a true PCI Express 3.0 16X slot, and it is capable of running Crossfire without a Crossfire bridge. And that's a telltale sign of this being a Hawaii-based GPU. There is no Crossfire bridge on there. That's cool because it's actually handled through the PCI Express slot. Now, I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about the actual specs of the card. You guys can find out all that information online. This is a, uh, a reference based PCB, but it's actually built by Vision Tech. It is not a, uh, it is not a, a PCB supplied by AMD. It's actually their built reference based PCB with non-reference cooler, as you can see. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how the thing is actually performing when it comes to games. You may be surprised, because I kind of was, to be honest. I mean, after all, size matters, right? Bigger is better. It's all about how big it is. Transition. Now I spent a lot of time with this card doing lots and lots of benchmarking and benchmarking it again and benchmarking it again and again and again. I actually spent quite a few hours with this card because I really wanted to figure out why it exists. Because I'll be honest, in the beginning I wasn't quite sure. Now I'm gonna actually be referencing my notes here because again, I don't wanna mess up any of these numbers. My goodness, all right. So the Vision Tech R9 285 has a base clock of 945 megahertz. Now, 
It, because it has its built-in uh, overclocking technology, sort of like the uh, GPU boost that NVIDIA is using, it can dynamically control the clock all the way up to 1077 megahertz uh, when it comes to auto overclocking. Now I used MSI Afterburner and I checked the extended overclocking features where it will allow me to take the card well beyond what is actually deemed safe because I like to see how much these cards really have in them. So the benchmarks that you are about to see are at the 1150 megahertz core and 1500 megahertz memory. Now remember that's 1500 times four or six gigahertz effective memory clock speed. So 1150 and 6000. That is a pretty good overclock if you ask me, especially considering we went uh, about another 74 megahertz above where they actually felt that we should stop. All right, now I ran kind of a gambit of tests and here's my methodology in case you guys are wondering. I, for Battlefield 4 guys, I have to say right now, Mantle 14.4 or whatever it is we're on, I don't remember the exact, whatever the latest driver is, I went and up updated and downloaded that. Uh, for Battlefield 4, I'm going to tell you right now, the frames per second averages were about 7 FPS higher than what you're about to see. But the only way I can actually measure uh, frames per second and, and benchmark them is by using the DirectX 11 driver. So if you're using Mantle, which is available to you, you should be using it, you're going to get a few more FPS average. That's kind of a big deal. Make sure you're doing that. But these tests I'm showing you are with DirectX 11. Just want to put that out there before people start saying, Yay, you didn't use Mantle. Well, I did. But then for the benchmarking, because all the other tests I did with other graphics cards and such were with the DX11, that's what we use for this test. All right, now the max temperatures with this cooler, it's very, very quiet. It actually never went higher than about 50% on the fans. And with the stock max overclock, uh, the max temperature was 65 degrees Celsius. Now that's a few degrees hotter than they advertised. But then again, I live in the desert and it gets really, really hot here. In fact, it was 105 degrees Fahrenheit today. I know there's places that are hotter, guys. I'm not bragging about the heat, trust me. Uh, it, chances are the four or five degrees hotter than they showed in their testing is entirely due to ambient temperature. Remember, it is an air-cooled card. Now the max temperatures with my overclock all the way up to 1150 actually reached 74 degrees Celsius. Now that's not very hot, but it's also not as cold as they advertised, but it still was very manageable in terms of temperature. So it just goes to show you push this card even farther, way farther than what they recommend in terms of overclocking, and the cooler can still handle it with lots of headroom. So kudos uh, Vision Tech on that one. That's a very beefy cooler that you've got there. All right, so now when it comes to Valley Benchmark, I was actually getting a 1,652 score with the Ex Extreme HD. That's actually what's running behind me right here. Now what's interesting about that, that's actually lower than my 280 and my 760 scored. So I don't know what's up with that, but that's the only test that it was beaten out by those two cards. I'm going to take Valley with a grain of salt. It's been acting very, very weird lately. In fact, when I went to a three-way SLI system, I get a lower score than I did with two-way. So Valley is just finicky. I'm going to throw that test out the window. Now, 3D Mark Fire Strike, I was getting a 7,739 uh, in the non-extreme test. I didn't run the extreme test, but the non-extreme test, 7,739, which is actually up there with the 280X in terms of performance. 3D Mark 11, 11,577 total score, and that's with the 4770K, which I've been using for my test bench for quite a while now. That beat out my GTX 680, that beat out the 280, it beat out the, two, uh, the 760 overclocked, that 11,577, that is a massive score. All right, now Battlefield 4, we were getting an average frames per second of 65 frames per second. Now here's the way that I come up with this test. Remember, DirectX 11 for this test, we were actually seeing well over 70 FPS averages based on what I was watching the counter do with Mantle going. But because Mantle is not a DirectX API, the frames per second counters can't detect the frames when Mantle's being used. That's why I have to use DX11 to do apples to apples comparisons. Now, when it comes to my, te my testology or methodology, I will run the Fraps benchmark for 60 seconds and I do it 10 times per match. 
and then I play another match. It's Parcel Storm 64 player. I play another match. I do another 10 60 second runs, and then I do it for a third time. And then I'll take the averages of the averages, if that makes any sense. So I'll average those 10, get a number, average the next 10, get a number. So I end up with three numbers, and then I take the average of the three. That's how I get my overall frames per second averages. That's my methodology. It's probably different than everyone else's. Let's just uh, take that for what it is. So Battlefield 4 was 65 frames per second average. Now Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider, I went ahead and put this at the uh, the extreme preset or ultra. I can't remember what they call it, but the highest preset with you know tessella tessellation going and tress effects and all that stuff. And we were getting a 72 frames per second average at 1080p with everything maxed out. It was very playable, no choppy. Uh, no choppiness whatsoever. I actually had a good time playing it. In fact, I kind of forgot that I was doing the bench test and I kind of kept playing and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot I never beat this game. And I kind of got into it. So I played that one for about an hour during all this bench testing. Uh, Dirt 3, an average of 129 frames per second with all settings maxed out at 1080p. That was 10 frames per second higher than I was actually getting with the R9 280. So this card is a freaking beast. Now, why does it exist? It's pretty simple, guys. It's got all the GCN architecture, all the true audio, everything you would expect on the GCN architecture. Graphics Core and Next, AMD's latest and greatest when it comes to technologies, all crammed into this tiny, tiny little card. It, 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 I like giant long cards, and this thing is just bursting my bubble with bigger and longer is better. And it comes in at $250 and it's giving you all this types of, these types of performance. Now there's another reason why you guys should really consider this particular card is it has a lifetime warranty. There's only two companies on the market that are doing that, XFX and Vision Tech. Guys, they stand by their products. You can't argue with the warranty. I rarely ever talk about warranty, but that's because it's rarely ever worth talking about. But a lifetime warranty is a big deal. Now this card is only available directly through Vision Tech. So you guys are gonna to have to head over to their website. They only do business right now in the United States. They are based out of the Chicago area. So you guys are dealing with a US based company here in the United States. All their tech support, all their warranty stuff, it's all handled in the US. So I'll put a link down to their storefront. You guys can go and check out their card there. It was certainly worth taking a look at. Small package, huge performance. That's what she said. Guys, follow on Twitter. I'm gonna go ahead and get the heck on out of here. The R9285. Pretty damn cool. All these cards are just, just turning everything topsy-turvy. See you in the next one.